In this film, I'm going to recreate an 18th century puzzle jug from the Viennese collection. Puzzle jugs were used for drinking games in pubs and taverns. I'll be using a white stoneware clay, and since this piece has several components, I'll use about four pounds of clay to make all the individual parts off of one piece. First I throw the three spouts The jug has a hollow handle. I'm pulling a solid ring of clay off the piece in the center and create a channel, bringing the two walls back together and trapping the air inside. I'm now bringing the clay up to form the main body of the jug. The jug will also have a hollow rim, so I'm leaving it thicker to create the channel. The channel is thrown in the same way as the handle. The piece has to be made larger than the original to account for the shrinkage of the clay during drying and firing. Once the jug is dried for several hours, it's firm enough to be trimmed and assembled. The hollow rim is cut where the spouts will be attached. I'm using a compass to mark the circular piercing on the neck. I'm scoring and attaching the spout. I'm cutting holes in the rim and the base where the hollow handle will be attached. I'm trimming and cutting the handle into shape before attaching it to the jug. Now that the handle's been attached, I can go back and pierce the neck. I'm creating a secret hole underneath the handle that adds to the trick of the jug when used. This particular piece has some interesting embellishments that ornament the top and base of the handle. The embellishments also serve as a disguise to the unusual fact that the handle goes down to the bottom of the base, which is not normal in a jug. Now that the piece has been put together, it's left to dry thoroughly. It's then fired at a low temperature known as a bisque firing. After the bisque firing, the pieces are prepared to be dipped into the glaze. The various open channels are stuffed with wax paper to stop the glaze blocking them. The jug is dipped into the glaze containing tin, which will create the opaque white surface. The water in the glaze quickly soaks into the bisque clay, leaving a dry coating of powdered glaze on the surface. Now that the piece is glazed, it's ready to be decorated. The pattern is marked with food coloring that will burn off when fired. The ceramic pigment is made with cobalt carbonate and iron oxide and will turn blue when fired. Puzzle jugs have a taunt in the form of a verse to entice the user. This piece has the verse, try how to drink and not to spill and prove the utmost of your skill. The rim and handle are decorated by using a sponge dipped into the cobalt slip and then pressed onto the glaze. The decoration on the handle serves to further disguise the fact that it goes right down to the base. 
Now that the piece has been through the final glaze firing, the colors have transformed into the blue and white palette of English Delphware. Obviously we can't pour out of the jug, so we'll have to try something else. Sucking on a spout doesn't work. There's no suction to draw the liquid out the handle and out the rim. Through trial and error, the other holes are covered until finally there's suction. And I can drink. Here you see my jug on the right with the V&A's jug on the left.